It is time for our Stand Up University alumni who is working all around. This guy's great. He's working all around the country, one of the top comedians around. You ready for your headliner and then our graduation? Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Steve Rocco Perello. Come on, come here. How about a nice hand for all the graduates? Keep it going for them. Very cool. This is fun. All right. Before I get started, quick survey, make some noise, guys. Make some noise if this is the first live comedy show you've been to since the pandemic lifted. Really? All right, cool. Most of you are very good. Guys, thank you so much for coming out. We do appreciate it because if I had to do one more Zoom show, I was going to fucking kill myself. Anyone here watch Zoom comedy? No, it's horrible. Oh, my God. I get booked for this Zoom show, right? And like they muted the audience, we couldn't hear the laughter. But the good news is there was a comment section. Yeah, they could type it in, ha ha ha, lol. Oh, they had a lot to say when it was my turn in front of the screen. I'm gonna read to you some of the comments I got when I did the Zoom show for the very first time. Here we go. You look like the Undertaker in Silent Bob had a baby. I'm like, fuck you, that's going on my act. <laughs> Let's see here, uh, Columbine, Columbine, yeah. <laughs> Matrix, Gypsy, Pirate, 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 Pirate. A lot of pirate comments. But listen, I'm used to that. I'm used to that, guys. This is how I dress. This isn't like a costume or anything. I go out dressed like this. So I'm used to the pirate comment. But one guy took it a step further, called me Hack Sparrow. I'm like, excuse me, that's Captain Hack Sparrow. <laughs> this is fun, man. This is fun. Uh, great to be here in Nassau County. I am from Suffolk County. Suffolk County in the house. Very cool. Uh, I live in a little town called Brentwood. Not usually the response you get. I usually get a nice no in you. Uh, I actually live right off Route 111. Route 111 is the border of Brentwood and Central Islip. Living there is like being caught between a rock and a crack rock. Uh, <laughs> that's the real border of crisis, right? <laughs> yeah, MS-13, that's the name of that game. You guys afraid of MS-13? You afraid? Nah, come on. What is that, 13 people with multiple sclerosis? It doesn't seem scary. Times like this, I miss Trump, man. I'm a Trump guy. All right, so I got some Trump people here. You know, I, I talk about, on stage, I talk about how much I like Trump, and people are, like, surprised that someone that looks like this voted for Trump, you know. Actually, I think they're more surprised that I was allowed to vote, but I digress. A little Trump trivia for you. Donald Trump was the first president in 100 years to not have a dog in the White House. First, yes, first president 100 years not have a White House dog. Then they asked him about, why don't you have a pet dog in the White House? And he said, I already have to deal with Nancy Pelosi, no more dogs. <laughs> that one's new. You like that one? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I found, you know, like, listen. Like him or not, listen, if you're on the left, that's cool. I respect everyone's opinion. Like him or not, though, you have to admit one thing. Donald Trump was the most patriotic president we've ever had, okay? Yeah! yeah. Like, guys, his hair was literally amber waves of grain. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do something in this country about the undocumented residents, right? Yes. Fuck the Amish. <laughs> There's gonna be a wall, all right, around Pennsylvania! That's I don't get the Amish, man. They're like pilgrims. I never got the hint. So, um, this was a, a little bit of a rough year for me. You know, we're getting out of the pandemic, but uh, a month ago, I observed the 20-year uh, anniversary of my father's passing. Um, he's buried in Pineland Cemetery. I went there to visit him. I, I made a, a nice post about it on Facebook. You know, I took a fit, uh, picture of, with my hand on his grave, you know, nice post. 257 likes on Facebook, guys. I'm like, wow. 
can't wait till my mom dies. <laughs> I'm only kidding, I love my mom. But uh, my mom, my mom doesn't really know who I am. Like, let me explain. Like, she doesn't really know this aspect of my life. Until recently, she joined Instagram, and she started following me on Instagram, she, and she had several questions. She's like, Steve, what are all these pictures of you on Instagram wearing eyeliner? <laughs> Hanging out at bars with a lot of dudes. Is there something you would like to tell your mother? I'm like, all right, Mom, you caught me. I'm goth. <laughs> and she's like, oh, oh, sweetie, it's pronounced gay. I'm like, no, Mom, I'm a goth comedian. Now she thinks that's what the G stands for in LGBT. <laughs> She's like, why didn't you tell me you were goth? I'm like, I wasn't ready to come out of the casket. <laughs> I'm so glad live comedy's back, man. If, if, if I missed one thing from 2020 from performing live stand-up comedy, it was performing at the nursing homes. It really was. Yeah, no, you, you, no, listen, I used to, once a month, I would go to St. Albans Veterans Hospital in Queens and do a comedy show there with Laughter Saves Lives. And, and like, I loved doing that. I would go up there with a big smile on my face, see all the veterans, like, hey guys, how you doing? Good to see you. And they look at me and they're like, no, it's not my time yet. <laughs> I love the elderly, man. They're full of knowledge and wisdom. But they do this one thing, they always come up to me at the end and they always ask me how old I am and then this conversation happens. I'm going to use you for example. Young man, how old are you? How old are you, buddy? 30? And then this shit happens. Ah, look at you to be that young again. You got your whole life ahead. You ever get that conversation from an old guy? Like, I don't go, I'm gonna start, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start going up to an older person, be like, uh, Roland, Roland, for example. Oh, Roland, may, with all the respect, may I ask how old you are? I've been around the sun 68 times. 68 years old. Happy to be alive, how about you? Ah, look at you. You got like 10 years left, you lucky bastard. <laughs> Flesh is a prison. <laughs> ah. Alright, we're having fun with me. I don't know. I got like some. Alright, uh, I'm, uh, I'm down a significant amount of weight. I'm down uh, 65 pounds. Woo! Thank you. Now, a lot of people ask me why they do to lose the weight. I joined the gym when I weighed 250 pounds. I used to weigh that much. And joining the gym really put in perspective how unhealthy I was. Because the next day, the bank called me and they thought someone stole my credit card. <laughs> you know what that means? That means that some asshole at TD Bank was going through my credit history. Taco Bell, yeah. Burger King, yeah. What does that say? Protein shake at LA Fitness? Well, that's a red flag. <laughs> Got the personal trainer at the gym. I don't know if anyone here has done that. Their job is to spook you into thinking healthy. One day, my guy showed up with a five pound replica of body fat. I don't know if you ever see these things, but you might remember from health class, the giant yellow blob. He's like, Steve, look at this. This is inside you right now, slowly killing you, wrapping around your intestines. Me, 250 pounds, all things, holy shit. That looks delicious. <laughs> Gotta get back in shape. And you all hitting the gym right now that the pandemic's all right. Yeah. Gotta start dating again. Dating was hard during the pandemic. I had one date in all of 2020. I was, this is a true story, I was dating a girl with no legs. True story, she was a double amputee from the knee down, both legs, and my friends made fun of me. They're like, Steve, come on. Why are you dating a girl with no legs? Come on. Truth be told, I don't care about appearances. I think all women are beautiful, right guys? Clap for women. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and to me, as long as you're sweet and kind, and my mom likes you, and you can deep throat. That's all I care about. <laughs> right, guys? Clap for women. <laughs> we met online. We met online. I didn't know she was an amputee. I went on two dates with her. She walked around just fine with prosthetic legs. I didn't know she was an amputee until we went back to her apartment, and I put my hand on her leg, and it's like this, it's a pole, it's like the fucking mic stand, just like this. 
I haven't gotten laid six months before this date. I'm so horny, the only thing I'm thinking is, ooh, she shaved. <laughs> One time she's in the shower, she got like a delivery. She had a new pair of prosthetic legs delivered to the apartment. She shouts up in the bathroom, who is it? I'm like, it's StubHub. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Oh, too dark. Not too dark. Ah. Ah. See, be wicked, but I'm worse. <laughs> You're the worst comedian I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. <laughs> oh, Jack Sparrow reference, I can give So, um, I mentioned before my, uh, my father passed away. He passed away 20 years ago, the week before 9-11, back in 01. At the time, he was dating a woman who worked in the Trade Center. Now, because of my father's death, she stayed home that whole week and missed the attack in the city. Yes, true story. And after it was all said that she comes up and goes, you know, your father's death actually saved my life. He's my hero. That's a beautiful thing to say, right? But I just look at her down there and I'm like, you know, he didn't mean to have that heart attack, right? <laughs> I mean, if he could be here, he would be. <laughs> not really a hero. Like, I love my father the dead, but like, he's not a hero. The firemen, the police officers, those are the heroes in my opinion. Right, guys? Yes. If anything, my daddy, too many heroes. <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys laughed at that, because that was a better response than the time I debuted that joke at a firehouse in New Jersey. They did not appreciate it. One guy actually stood up in the middle of the crowd and goes, Hey, asshole, it's hoagies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the pandemic, a lot of death. I, I, I don't know if you, I know what you were expecting when I walked up here. Like I talk a lot about death. Right? You know, I, I'm no stranger to death. You know, I lost a lot of family when I was young. You don't end up looking like this without some tragedy in your life. You know, you know like growing up was hard for me, especially during the holidays. They got a lot of toys and presents. You know, we would come back to school after Christmas break. All the kids they had the baseball cards, the Pokemon cards. Did you collect some sort of card growing up over here? Wait, Pokemon, you know what cards I had? Those little plastic cards that they give out the funeral homes? <laughs> Show up the next day at school, no one wants to trade with me. Come on, wait off your Derek G or rookie card, I'll give you a uh, dad. <laughs> Yo, they actually spelled my dad's name wrong on this card. Isn't that fucked up? Well, I mean, they fixed it, so this one's limited edition. <laughs> I got them all. I got my dad, my grandparents, my aunt and uncle. That's a full house, ladies and gentlemen. Full house. Read them and weep. I get it, read them and talk. I don't do this bit in nursing homes anymore. <laughs> last time I actually, the last time I was at St. Elements, I did my magic act. I'm like, is this your card? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm known for doing that bit here on Long Island. Like, one time I'm here one night, I go to the bar, this gorgeous woman comes up to me, gives me her mom's and dad's funeral cards. And I'm really excited, because this woman's stunning, and she seems interested in me, and I don't have to meet her parents. <laughs> Dark, dark, dark. Uh, anyone lose a relative to COVID? You want to talk about it? You got the card? <laughs> yeah. I did lose a relative to COVID. I did. I uh, lost my great aunt, who was in the nursing home with late stage Alzheimer's. She had Alzheimer's, but she was also a narcissist, so every day she was like, Do you know who the fuck I am? <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a thinker. <laughs> Early in her diagnosis, she was still able to, like, come out in public, and I did that bit in front of her when she was in the audience. She got very upset with me. But I saw her the week later, she got over it. <laughs> so, like, it didn't even happen. So, it was crazy during the pandemic, right? Y'all run right out and get a mask, right? Like, I, had, I, I didn't know, like, where to get a mask, but I found that the bandanas were a suitable replacement. Or mess. So now this was me, every down, 
<laughs> every, every day walking down the streets of Brentwood. <laughs> I get a lot of suspicious looks at the airport, not gonna lie. But I do get hit on by the guy at Halal, so that's okay. <laughs> I love comedy, guys. Give yourselves a round of applause for coming out. Thank you. This is so much better than like one of my old jobs. I used to be a school photographer. <laughs> no, it's true. I used to work for the company called Life Touch. You ever hear of them? Life Touch? Man. Yeah, Life Touch, by the way, the most inappropriate name for a company that photographs children. <laughs> I got a big show of a life touch one time. Not that. Not that. Just clarifying. Apparently someone with my demeanor and my sense of fashion shouldn't be going up to schools with a camera bag saying he's there for the shooting. But I will say this, I did get hit on by a teacher one time. A teacher asked me if I would be interested in doing a private lingerie shoot, give me a sexy wink. I'm like, this is highly inappropriate, Mr. Murphy. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the graduation ceremony. Steve Rocco Perello. During the day, Steve works as a spokesperson for Ritalin. 